you know how many thoughts the average person has on a daily basis? Research suggests that we have from 60 to 70,000 thoughts every day. And 90% of these are thoughts that we had the day before, and 80% of them are negative. How does that make you feel? Imagine, think about your own thoughts. You'll realize that you do have thoughts that are, I'm not good enough, or this will never work out, or everything I do turns out to be a disaster, or things like that. We're going to talk about how you can go from having a monkey mind, which is what they call it when you have all these negative thoughts every day, to how you can have a monk e mind, a mind like a monk. Welcome back to The Goal Getter Life. I'm Cindy Knorr, a certified high performance coach and change agent with Synergy Coaching. Today we're going to talk about your monkey mind. You know, the mind with your thoughts going crazy all the time. Woo, woo, woo. You know, that kind of a monkey and how you can change it up and have the mind of a monk. That's, oh, this chair just about <laughs> folded up right under me. It's the mind of a monk. When, when I think about somebody who has the calmest mind in the world, that's who I think about. I think about monks. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about going from crazy thinking to, hmm, you know, meditation and really peaceful thinking and how it's easier than you think and how you're probably doing it wrong and making it harder for yourself. In this book, this is an awesome book and I always love to recommend books to you, books that I've read and enjoy. This one's by Michael Singer and it's called the untethered soul and in chapter two the whole chapter is dedicated to your inner roommate that's a wonderful wonderful way of thinking about how your thoughts you have so many thoughts going on all the time and they're asking a question and they're answering the question and then they're contradicting themselves like it's just crazy if you think about what's going on inside your head so what michael talks about in this book is imagine if that was a real person and it was with you everywhere you went. They sat beside you while you were watching TV and you were trying to watch TV and they were just talking away like, did you turn the light off downstairs? No, I don't think you did. Well, yes, I did. You know, you're trying to watch and focus on the TV and there's like crazy talk going on in your head. Or um, that guy that I saw today, I wish I hadn't said that, I'm such an idiot, you know, whatever crazy random thoughts coming up all the time. Imagine if this was a real person that was talking to you, talking to you while you're watching TV, while you're cooking, while you're trying to fall asleep, laying in your bed. Just imagine this person, negative things that they say to you, you're no good. They even follow you in the bathroom. This is your best friend following you everywhere. And when you catch a glimpse of yourself in the mirror, this crazy friend of yours tells you how your butt looks so fat and you're gaining weight and you're, you're just disgusting and nobody's ever gonna love you and all this kind of stuff. This is your friend that's following you around. So what Michael Singer says is, just imagine if that was a real person, how long would you put up with that? You know, you would say, get out of here. You'd show them to the door and say, I don't like you, you're so mean and you talk all the time. When do you ever shut up? So when I think of someone who doesn't have this kind of a mind, I think of a monk. And how can you go from having a monkey mind, you know, where it's crazy, ooh, 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 another idea, and ooh, another thought, to having a mind of a monk? What do you think about when you think about monks? I think about meditation, that monks are really good at meditation. And I'm I was really surprised actually to just find out recently that monks don't sit like in a lotus position in a, well, I mean, I didn't really think they did, but when we think about meditation, we think that you have to sit in a room, like your Zen room on a cushion and you, your legs are crossed and your hands are like this and your eyes are closed. You focus on your breathing. If you have crystals in your room and you've got incense and you have Everything is just aligned and perfect. The blinds are drawn and it's quiet and this is your peaceful time and you're gonna meditate, right? So if you sit there and you close your eyes and try to meditate and then all of a sudden you're, you get these thoughts which are normal, right? Your mind starts to think. But 
imagine if you got your nose started to itch, you know? This is what happened to me when I try to meditate sitting in a position like that. So all of a sudden my nose is itching and I'm thinking, no, no, don't think about the itch. And then, oh, focus on your breath, you know? And then all of a sudden the itch is just getting worse and worse and you're like, oh, I can't, I can't, I'm, okay, okay, just, okay. <laughs> and then you just get rid of it and then, then yeah, maybe you should scratch everywhere just to get it over with in case you're gonna start itching somewhere else and then, Okay, I'm good now, right? So a lot of people try meditating like this. And I think you're making it more difficult for yourself than it needs to be. Not long ago, I heard about a monk. His name is Gaylong Thubton. And Gaylong just means lifelong monk. And Thubton is actually his, his real name. And what this monk was saying is that when you meditate, it's not a good idea to just have your eyes closed and be in this kind of a Zen room where you have crystals and all of the things aligned and the incense and your eyes closed especially. This isn't the best way to meditate because if you're in traffic or if your boss is yelling at you or if you can't pay your bills and the credit card company is calling you, those are not the situations where you can calm yourself because you don't have all your crystals and your incense and your, your nice cushion to sit on, right? So you need to be able to calm your mind in everyday situations. And I love this because I don't like sitting still in a meditation position. I meditate everywhere, no matter where I am. Like this monk was saying, if you're in line at the grocery store, you can decide to just take some deep breaths and smile to yourself and just clear your thoughts and think about how you can just find something to be grateful for or be accepting of other people or whatever. Anywhere you are, in the line at the grocery store or in crazy traffic or at work when your boss is yelling at you or if you're on an airplane and there are noisy kids kicking you in the back of your seat. You know, these are real life times and situations where we need to be able to just focus on your breath and calm yourself and not let your thoughts run away with you. I love it. I just think that's so amazing that you don't have to meditate. They say we should be meditating because this high stress in our lives and the distractions and the demands that we have, we have so much cortisol flooding through our system and it's causing so many diseases from high blood pressure to diabetes and cancer. All these kind of things are caused by stress. So we need to meditate. My message to you today is to meditate with your eyes open, wherever you are. For more everyday strategies on how to be your best and live an awesome life, subscribe to my channel. Comment, like, and share it with anyone you think might benefit. Until next time, I'm Cindy Knorr, and the best in me recognizes and honors the very best in you.